second. I've got a couple left. All right, so Unit 3, uh, Chapter 5.1. Okay, so stay with me. Let's get through this quickly. I want you guys to have some work time today. Okay, so 5.1, Vertical Asymptotes. We're going to examine the behavior. Now, when it says exam behavior, that means you're going to test points. Okay, you're just going to test points on the left and right. And why are they doing plus and minus together here? Why can they do that on this problem? Let's make sure we understand a number sense. Because it's squared. It doesn't matter if I square one or negative one, I'm going to be in the same spot. Okay? Yes, sir? All right, so that's the idea. That's why they do the plus or minus together, because the squaring is going to make them the same number, essentially. Okay? And now this is what happens. If I do plus or minus one, that squared is one. One over one is one. So that's why at these points here, uh, these are one and one. Exactly. That's why I'm saying we're doing them together because of that fact. And as you see, as we get a smaller number, our answer gets much bigger. So that that means is it coming from both directions. Now pay attention to what I just said. Both directions, coming this way and this way, I'm getting smaller numbers, smaller negative or smaller positive. Like right here is negative 0 0.05, and this is positive 0 0.05. And I keep getting smaller they get bigger numbers, which means it's going to infinity. They're both staying away from zero, because it can't be zero. Right? We can't have zero, because I put zero on the bottom. That creates a vertical asymptote. Okay? Questions on that? So now what we're going to focus on today is using our limits to understand approaching it from the left and approaching it from the right. Okay? And we're familiar with that stuff. The bottom is zero. Right, and x can't be zero on the bottom, an undefined value, okay? But we still, um, we'll get to some spots where it seems undefined, but maybe we cancel something and it is defined there, but not quite, but anyway, there'll be some things we'll test. But generally, that's the idea. So the values of the table, the graph show that the closer we get to x to zero, the larger the number gets, which means we're going up into infinity. So this is how you'd write this notation. So limit is x approaches zero, and remember, we talk about le approaching a number from left and right. We go to infinity. So both times they go up to infinity. Okay. And we say that the line, now this is important. Remember, it's a vertical line. It's a vertical asymptote. All vertical lines are written in the form of x equals. So that asymptote is x equals zero. Straight up and down line, essentially the y-axis. Okay. Boring, got it? Very good. Okay, notice that f is not defined at x equals zero. That points, uh, I can't talk today. <laughs> so f has a point of discontinuity, discontinuity at zero. This type of discontinuity is called infinite discontinuity because it's going to infinity. It's infinitely going away from it. Okay? And that's just showing you the right, right at the same way. Okay, if the values of f of x can be arbitrarily large, as large as we like, by taking an x sufficiently close to a. So all that's saying is, as we get really close with like fractions, as I'm getting really close to zero, my number gets smaller on the bottom of a fraction, which actually makes it a bigger number. Okay, that's all this is talking about, which makes it go to infinity. I will say just in summary of that stuff, is that um, the most important thing when you're doing these is to have good number sense knowing when something's going to be positive or negative, knowing what's going to make this grow or shrink. Those two things are kind of the most important when you're looking at these problems today. Okay? So here's an example of one that's an absolute that's going to infinite. Okay? Like one we just had. Okay? This one is negative infinity. They're both diving down. Okay? And that one's denoted with negative infinity. Okay, so functions that become large negatives as x becomes close to a, these are the symbols, this is all four different ones. So this is with the left and right notation. So as it's approaching from the left of infinity, negative infinity, et cetera, if you have any of these at any point, that means that point's an asymptote of some sort because it's going to infinity or pause infinity, because, negative or pause infinity because it has to bound, it's bounded by the asymptote. It can't cross it. So anytime you get this relationship somewhere in one of your graphs, that's recognized as an asymptote. Right, a vertical one, yes, thank you. A vertical asymptote, and that's what this is saying right here. So maybe if you want to write whatever, any of this down, you can. 
Okay, so to continue on, here is your left and right, what they look like from left and right. Okay, so right here is from the left, because it's the left of the asymptote. I know, I think some of you sometimes think it's going to the right. That's, we're talking about the left of the asymptote. Okay, so that's what this denotes. Okay, that's the right, the right of it. This is to the left, it's going to negative infinity. This is from the right, it's going to negative infinity. This is the left and right, one-sided limit asymptote. Okay? Everybody okay with that? All right, so example one. Find the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 over x. Okay? So we're coming from the right means we're coming from the right, so we're coming from to 0. We're doing like, um, we're coming this way, right? So we're thinking of numbers like 5 to 3 to 1 to 1 half, etc. We're coming from the right of our x values. Okay? And as you do that, as our numbers get smaller, right, as we keep coming from the right, what happens to our value? So this is the number since I was talking about. So if I put a 1 half down here, what's 1 over 1 half? 2. So it's going to keep getting bigger. 1 fifth, 5, 1 tenth, 10. So it's going to keep getting bigger. So that means the limit as 1 over x from the right is infinity because it's getting really big. If I did 1 over a million, it'd be a million. Okay? So this is what I mean, Abby. So we're looking at 1 over x, and we're coming from the right. So like 1 over like 100 is right here. Yeah, we get a... Right, as we get smaller, yeah, no, less than 1. Closer to 0, yeah. Right, the closer to 0 we get, the bigger the number we get. Okay, so like 1 over 100 would be way, way up here at 100. It's going to take off. So that means it gives us the infinity. Okay, now if we look at it coming from the left. Okay, we'll come from the left now. I'm doing negative 5, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 tenth, or whatever. So what's going to happen there? Very big number, but negative now. Okay, very big number, but negative. Now, what's the difference between this problem and the one we opened class with? It's not squared. So since it's not squared, we do have to count for the negatives. And so in this case, we get negative infinity. So that means it's going to go ahead and take off downward. Okay? The reason this helps us is because now we can graph this. So this whole unit we're doing right now is curve sketching. Okay? We are doing curve sketching, so we're dra dra ah, drawing graphs. Okay, so our graph looks like this. Let's just put, I like to get a couple of general points. So if we put negative 1 in, what do I get? Negative 1. If I put positive 1 in, what do I get? 1. That's what your graph would look like. So from the right, it goes to positive infinity. From the left, it goes to negative infinity. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Good? Okay. All right, example two here. Like I said, I'm going faster. I'm going to slow down my talking, though. Okay, so this one. Okay, we want to look at it. So you want to think about what's happening close to six. What's happening at 6.1, and what's happening at 5.9, for example. That's what you want to think about, okay? So let's do this here. Now, the being the square, what's that going to do for us? What's that? That's always going to be a positive. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Okay, so since it's being squared, so if I do 5.9, 5.9 minus 6 is what? Negative 0.1. But I square that, it's now a positive small number. Are you guys staying with me? And if it's a small number on the bottom of a fraction, what's it going to do to the fraction? Make it really big. Now stay with me. 2 minus that thing makes us have a really what? 
really big negative number. Nope, you're right. A really small number, a really big negative number. Okay? So, I know I lost you. Okay, watch. Okay? So, I'm going 2 minus 5 over 5.9 minus 6 squared. That's going to give me 2 minus 5 over negative 0.1 squared. So, and that'd be 2, what's 0.1 squared? Is that 0.01? Yeah. Yep. Hope you guys are right. 5 over 0.01 is 500. 2 minus 500 is negative 4098. And so as we keep getting closer, if we did 5.99, we did 5.999, it's going to continue to be a very big negative. So my point is, is that you're going to get the limit of this guy is negative infinity. Exactly, yeah, you get in the number sense, right? Trying stuff around that limit. We can't do six because that's the asymptote. Okay, if you do these from left and right, the reason we only have one answer here is because they both are going to drive downward because of why. Why are they? It's squared, right. So from both sides, they're going to have the same relationship, just like our first problem. Okay, but if you try to point approaching the other side? The right side? Right, 6.1, we get the same thing. Because 6.1, we get 0.1, 0.1 squared. So the square is the reason. Very good, very good. Okay. All right, we only got one more example is all. Give you guys a second here. All right, so find the vertical asymptotes of the function. So the first thing we want to do when we find the vertical asymptotes is, one, we need to know what's on the bottom. So we got a factor. Okay, I think that's pretty common. We understand that. So the first thing we're going to do is factor that to x minus 3, x plus 2. Okay, now once we've done that, the zeros of the bottom are 3 and negative 2. What's that? Opposite, yeah, what makes it 0. Okay, and these are, I'm going to say, we're not going to for sure yet, we need to test, these are possible vertical asymptotes. So to confirm this, I'm going to look at 3 from the left and right. Okay, and we're going to look at it from the right. Okay? All right, so this is where I'm talking about the number sense part. Okay, so if I'm looking at it from the right, um, or the left, excuse me, the left of 3, so what's something left of 3? Yeah, well, we can actually go easier on these ones, because I'm not, we just want to see um, what it does, but you could do 2.99, you're right. I just use 2, because I already know, okay, stay with me, I already know that if I do a really, like, 2.99, what, how, uh, What's growing faster, the top or bottom? The bottom, right? So I already know that this thing's going to take off as it gets closer to that number. So what I'm saying is if I do the 2.99, that's going to give me a really small number here. And then it's going to shoot up or down depending on my sign. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So I'm saying right now you don't have to worry about the 2.99 per se. I did, I checked just 2. If I put 2 in, what's the top in terms of positive, negative? Positive. What's the bottom? Negative. What's a positive or a negative? negative? Negative. So you get negative infinity because it's going to take off at the asymptote. If it is one, I guess. <laughs> okay. Okay. How about three from the right? So if I put yeah, if I put four in, positive, positive, and positive, I get positive. Again, if you did put 3.0001, that would still be a very big number. Okay? Yeah, so 3 is an asymptote, yep. It is? It is. Because remember, on our definition, for our one side limits, you used to have one of them. 
If it's, if you had one of them, it works. So we have two. It's all you want is someone to be in drugs to help you use them. Right. Right, they don't have to match. No, they don't have to match. Because that 1 over X didn't match, right? The 1 over X, 1 went up, 1 went down. And this one is not matching because, I'll explain a little bit more later, but the degree on the top is 1. The degree on the top bottom is 2. So 1 minus, like, it's 1 over X in the relationship. So, yeah, did I explain that earlier? <laughs> Because it's there's one degree on top, there's two on bottom. If you cancel them, essentially, you'd have one over x relationship, which is they're going to be odd. Odd goes away from each other. Okay. So if you the, of the right and it's the opposite the other side. Yeah. Um. Anyone yes, that probably won't happen. Because you still have you still have something that's it's not touching from this one for some reason. So you only had one of them. Something still not touching it. Yeah. Okay, um, this one would be 2 from the left, or negative 2, sorry. And then we'll go 2 from the right. Negative 2, yeah, thank you. Okay, so if I go 2, negative 2 from the left would be... Um, Negative 3, right? So negative 3, what does that give me? Negative up here, negative here, positive here. What's negative times a positive? Negative, negative over negative, positive infinity. From the, no, you're right. We said they're tweeted from the right. If it's negative 3, we'd be to the, yeah, so if we have negative 2, we're coming from the left. No, that's right. Say that again. Yeah. So we have negative 3. We have negative 3. Did we not do it? Oh, yeah, because of this, right? Yeah, you guys are right. It would be negative 3, negative 6, negative 1. Nope, it's negative. Sorry. It was negative in my notes. I was just getting ready to figure out why we did that. So if we fix negative 3, because negative 3 is to the left of negative 2, I'd have a negative on top. Negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative times a negative is a positive. Over a negative is a negative. Okay. Sorry. Then if we do from the right, we can do something simple like 1. So 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And... Some, something's not adding up. Hold on. That one equals positive. Yeah. Two from the left, two from the right. Okay. This is what a graph looks like. And then we'll be done. So using that information, we figured out that Okay, we figured out that negative three, excuse me, negative two is a vertical asymptote. 3 is a vertical asymptote. And this is where our information helps us. So what is happening to the left of negative 2? Right. It's dropping down. Okay. Contest some points real quick. What if I put 0 in for my function? If I put 0 into the original, what would you get? I just want to get some points here. Yeah, you get 0. So that means it crosses to the origin. Okay, what if I put in 1? One. 1. No, that's right. 1 over negative 6 is right. So if I put 1 in... You get negative one six, so it's right here. Put in negative one. Yep. So it'd be one over four. So you can see, and then okay, what happens to the right of our asymptote negative two? What happens to the right of negative two? What happens to the left of three? 
Left does. Why is it? No, left goes to negative infinity. What's that? The middle? This, which one? Okay, so we're following our behavior. Pause infinity, negative infinity. Okay, and the last piece is after three, on the right of three, we had it went to pause infinity. There's your graph based off your end behaviors. Okay.